Well, congratulations, Bill, on being selected as one of the 18 of the last nine honorees, our young alums, and we're Thank so you. proud of all of you accomplished, and we're glad you're back on campus here in Oxford. Thanks, it's, it's awesome to be back. Well, we have a first opening question for you. Um, Marine captain, music major. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, so I, I realize that's an unusual uh, path. I knew that I wanted to be a Marine um, from when I was, a time I was pretty young. Uh, and I first contacted a, a person with uh, the Marine Officer Recruiting Office here uh, my freshman year. Um, I kind of had these two aspirations to be involved in music, whether as an educator or performer, uh, and also to serve in the Marine Corps. Um, so I, I came here as a music major and I remained a music major uh, throughout my time at Miami, but I found my way to the Marine Corps uh, through the platoon leaders course, which sent me to Quantico, Virginia, uh, during a couple summers to get yelled at and do push-ups and among other things. Uh, and then upon graduation, I, I was commissioned uh, a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. Well, that's terrific. Um, maybe it's a rumor, maybe it's true, but did you sing for both President Obama and the Pope? Uh, yeah, uh, so I was, I was with uh, a choir when I got to Washington, D.C. as a commitment device to keep me going to church a little more often. I joined the church choir at St. Augustine's, uh, which is an African-American Catholic church in DC. And uh, it's a really special group. And we toured Italy uh, and, and had a great time there. Uh, we also sang Christmas parties at the White House and the Vice President's residence uh, in DC. And um, through, uh, through that choir and through some other uh, relationships at the White House, we ended up singing for the arrival of Pope Francis. Uh, and we had sung for the Obamas uh, in the past at, at Christmas parties, and uh, I guess they liked us, so they had us back. And uh, that was the thrill of a lifetime. Uh, I met some incredible people that day, and uh, my mom got to watch me on TV, uh, so bucket list item there. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was, it was great. It was an incredibly moving experience. That must have been amazing. Yeah. Um, you might be a little mad at me, but you think you could belt out a few verses of our uh, alma mater? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. Uh, while I'm here and there's a camera in my face, I guess I don't really have much <laughs> of an option. Uh, uh, Old Miami from thy hill crest, thou hast watched the decades roll. Generations quested from the sturdy hearted pure of soul. Old Miami, new Miami, days of old and days to be. Weave the story of thy glory, our Miami, here's to thee. Awesome. A little better with a choir. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. That's terrific. Um, you know, being a Marine captain, um, sounds very different than being a student at Miami. Mm -hmm. But you know, our mission and part of our code of love and honor, um, there's dignity and respect and core virtues and values that we love to see instilled in our students and our graduates as they go out there. Is there any parallels that you can draw between the Marine Corps and then the code of love and honor? Sure. Uh, I think kind of like a lot of uh, honor codes or virtues, or in the Marine Corps we call them our, our core values, honor, courage, and commitment. Um, they all kind of say the same thing in different ways, and they're—I'd uh, say—they're—they're they're meant to inspire us to to aspire to the best we we can be. And um, in the Marine Corps, honor, courage, and commitment—we can distill that all we want. We can we can be verbose about it and talk about all the different things that it might mean to us. Uh, but in the end, I think it's all about valuing the institution, the people, um, and uh, and being the best you can in order to, to, to honor those people in that institution. So, Terrific. Sure. Is there a, a Miami experience, a course, a favorite professor you'd like to tell us about? Um, n not my professor, but, uh, but an individual who uh, meant a lot to me here, means a lot to me now, Dr. Nault, who uh, was Vice President for Student Services uh, when I was here. and. Um, there, I had difficult times and youthful indiscretions uh, while I was here, uh, and Dr. Nault helped me through those. Um, he is uh, the biggest fan of his students and uh, a family figure to, to us. Uh, I'm 
uh, going to spend much of Saturday with him while I'm here, and I, I look forward to that. So, yeah, and he, I, I said when my initial kind of interview with uh, with the 18 of nine folks that to me he's love and honor, and and he is uh, he's a parent. To, uh, yeah, I, there are people say that he said. Uh, He's got 16,000 students or 14,000 students that he calls his kids and, and, and we're his sons and daughters. And I think, uh, yeah, there's some, uh, there's so much uh, about my life that has gone right because Dr. Nault was there to kind of provide the rudder to, to, to push me in the right direction, yeah. Well, that's terrific. Um, just have a question for you. I'm a I'm a I'm brand new here in Miami and just sure. been on the job for three and a half months and you're a marine captain and so you're used to giving orders and people <laughs> following you perhaps and you're used to Most being times. a servant leader. <laughs> Why don't you give me some leadership advice that I could take perhaps from your marine experiences and actually apply into my new job here as president? Um, you're gonna want everybody to like you. Um, I want all my Marines to like me, and I have to fight that I want them to like me. Um, but if you're doing it right, they're going to like you. Uh, but if you fall v too victim to that, that tendency to, to want them to like you, uh, they're not going to like you very much. And, and uh, you know, sometimes you do it right and sometimes you do it wrong. But if you're trying and you care about your people, uh, your students, um, and you're always trying to do best by them, uh, whether sometimes that's being hard on them, um, sometimes it's understanding where uh, you can do uh, the right thing, whether it's written in the book that way or not, um, then they'll they'll value and respect you and, and care about you. Now, I I couldn't write much of a book on leadership, and if I did, I'm certain no one would read it, and there'd be plenty of anyone who did would have have plenty of negative things about it. So uh, <laughs> take that all with a grain of salt. Uh, do you have a, a favorite place on the Miami campus, a location, or a favorite memory about the campus or Miami? Uh, sure. I mean, I have a hundred favorite places uh, that I've been walking around uh, the last couple days. Uh, I lived in the KA house, and and I love I love being back there. I lived in Morris Hall my freshman year, and it was great being back there um, when I first got back to campus. Um, uh, Western campus uh, played frisbee golf with my dog uh, there all the time when I uh, when I was a student. Um, so I don't know. I guess the answer to that question would be no, because there are too many places that I loved here. Uh, not not one that I could name. Yeah. That's terrific. Uh, last question. Um, Marine captain, a lot of leadership, um, love and honor at Miami, graduate Miami. Can you give? Any advice to our graduates that are going out there in today's world, which, which is uh, you know very different in many ways than maybe you graduated or when I graduated from college. Uh, there's there's a lot of differences, but what could you give them in terms of advice mm -hmm. in taking that next step after graduation? Um, there's a lot of rapid change occurring on a lot of fronts, and I think embracing those changes and um, and moving with that current and and being as close to the front edge of that is as one can, uh, will ensure that you're not left behind, you know? And I think if you cling to some, uh, some longing for the past of some bygone era or some bygone uh, tradition or habit of, uh, of you're, you're gonna get left behind. So, so be on the leading edge of things, embrace change, um, and uh, never, stop, never stop learning um, and expanding and, and seeking ways that you can uh, Fill the the knowledge gaps in your life, uh, and and expand your your horizons, your perspective on things that you may not have uh, experienced or been immersed in uh, in your past. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bill. Congratulations! All right, and we're inspired by all your hard work and effort and dedication to service to country, and also we're very proud of you. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, I thank appreciate you. it. <laughs>